All right. And just a reminder of why we're doing office hours, of course, multiple different reasons, but a couple of them are that number 19 of the high leverage practices, which are those items that we know that if we use while we're teaching and engaging with students, they really contribute to student achievement. And number 19 is using assistive and instructional technologies. We always want to be thinking through the set framework, and that's looking at the student, the environments, the tasks, and then the tools. Of course, looking through that lens of equity to make sure that every student is getting exactly what it is that they need. And now, without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Ren. I'll stop sharing my screen, Ren. And I'll let you introduce yourself and you. share your slides. Thank um, you. Yeah. I'll just pull up my slide here. Great. A little cumbersome. There we go. How does that look? I'm not seeing it yet, but it's about to pop up. I can tell. Looks great. Okay. <laughs> well, my name is Ren. Um, I'm a speech language pathologist in Grand Rapids. Um, I work primarily at the elementary level. And man, I've been really just getting like a fire under my butt lately about all of this AT stuff. And um, I've had a few kids just in the recent like four years where I'm just stuck. And so I've been trying to think of new things. Uh, but I've been in the field for 12 years, um, 10 years in the schools and um, every year new challenges. But um, today I'm going to talk about core vocabulary and about five or six years ago, I found myself in a time working with a DCD teacher where we were we were just wanting to learn new things, but we wanted to get going right away. We didn't have the patience to um, evaluate every kid individually that at that moment we had to, you know, so we're like, what can we use today? What can we start with today? And one of the things I came across was this core vocabulary, which I honestly did not learn about in graduate school. So it was all new to me. And um, we stumbled along the way, but I'm just going to go through the process that we went through. I'll start um, by talking about just basically what core vocabulary is in case some of you guys haven't heard of it before. I'll talk about our process, how we started, some of the things that worked and didn't work, um, some of the lessons that we used, um, kind of, and then I'm going to show exactly what some of that looked like. I have a little video of something that similar to what we did, and then I'll talk specifically about how we modeled it in that classroom. Um, and then I'm just going to hit, if I have time, on core vocabulary and how it works with other types of AAC and the importance of it. Um, and then I'll just list some of the benefits that we saw. These are just things that we observed. Um, and there's a ton of data and research out there that supports this, but all I did was just think to myself, what did we see in our room and in our building after using CORE? Um, so I'm not sure, I know I have a few speech therapists here, they probably have heard of CORE, but I'm just gonna really briefly go through um, what this is. So when we think about vocabulary, it's kind of broke, and AAC, it's kind of broken up into a few different categories. Um, we have CORE vocabulary, which is what we're gonna talk mostly about today. And this is a small number of words that we use in most of our messages that we communicate with. Um, it's broken down into primarily pronouns, um, descriptors, actions, um, and prepositions. So I put a few uh, like examples there, me, help, more, big, on. Um, and the idea is, is that we can use these in lots of settings, with lots of different people and have a lot of power in what we say. Um, and this is compared to what we call fringe vocabulary and that fringe vocabulary is the more specific vocabulary. So it might be like nouns. So ball is important when you're playing ball, but is it important when you're going to the bathroom? Not as much, but help, help is important when you're playing ball and going to the bathroom. So that's kind of more of a simple way to explain that. But it, these core words work across environments. That's one of the biggest um, things that adds to the power of it. Um, and why is it important? Um, I was reading some research that just talked about how these types of words, these core words, are fundamental and foundational across all languages, including sign language, including just any verbal languages, and then also AAC. So we see the commonality across languages. Um, 
So here's an example of a larger core board. You can kind of see that there are the pronouns over here. Um, this one is really interesting because you could actually do some sentence building with it if you wanted, um, but that's a larger version of a core board. This one might be the proloquo to go version, I think. Um, here's a more simplistic version that you might see as an introductory board. Um, so they have a lot of these terms that um, kids would use, especially when they're first developing language. So go, help, look, want, done, more done, you know, that type of vocabulary that we use a lot. Um, and then this is a very, this one has a lot more on it. And I've seen these like where they fold up into sort of a folder. So maybe the front would have the main words and then you'd open it and you would have more. So now we're almost getting more into like a system, um, vocabulary system. And then this is the board that um, the teacher I was working with, which was actually Melissa King at the time, um, we decided to go with. We wanted something kind of in the middle between the little board, you know, and the really big board, because <laughs> that was overwhelming to us as well. But you can see here, um, it really has a lot of powerful words that are used across the day. And what I loved is that it really went across types of communication. So we have requesting, we have refusing, we have commenting, we have the wow, uh, which I use a lot. <laughs> um, and also commenting, you know, things are good or bad. There's some feelings on there. So it just was a nice variety without being overwhelming um, number of pictures. So any questions so far just on these different types of boards or the types of words you're going to see on them? OK, <laughs> please, please just raise your hand. I don't know how you do that on here. Oh, you can click a button or just say my name. <laughs> That's fine, too. Um, but I really want to get through all this. so I'm going to keep moving. Just stop me if you need to. So our process, that first thing that Melissa and I did was we talked about our students and we looked at the options of boards. I just showed you a few. That was kind of overwhelming at first, but we looked at our students and some of them had a little bit of verbal communication, either echolalia or some words that were not super intelligible, but they would use them. Um, and then we just talked about how we really wanted to start generalizing these skills that the kids were starting to use. And so um, first we just picked the board and I showed you the board we did. We printed a bunch of them off in you know, a regular piece of paper and we just laminated them. Melissa taped a bunch down to desks in her classroom. I made an oversized one for the wall. I had seen a video of somebody using this and I said, we're just gonna put it on the wall. <laughs> Hopefully we'll use it. Um, well, we really weren't sure how it was going to look. So we just kind of, we probably overprinted, but we printed a lot of them um, because I thought to myself, well, eventually I want kids to be able to take these with them if they need them, like throughout the building. Um, and then we started talking about, okay, how are we going to introduce these different words to students? How are we going to model them? And we decided we wanted to do a whole group lesson with the kids that seemed like they would benefit from learning how and when to use some of these target words. Um, and I'm going to show you more in depthly what some of those large group lessons looked like. But um, we ended up doing about a, one word a week. You probably heard of this like core word, word of the week. Um, but we just wanted to have sort of uh, a easy planning system for ourselves that was really important because we didn't have a lot of time and and energy um so we just wrote the words on the calendar and we said this week we're going to do more this week we're going to do done um and i was really lucky that i found a program by um these women called the language ladies and they had already laid it out so i did purchase that with some school funds um, and they have things you can print and then they have some um, virtual versions of the products as well, like on boom cards. That's this chatter book, which I'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, um, that did help us because once we had some of that uh, materials prepared, there was almost no planning. Um, we were just able to go ahead. Um, and then we also decided we wanted, I had enough time to be in the room about 20 minutes a day. And there was about 12 kids that I serviced. So I was getting all 12 of those kids into that 20 minutes a day every day. Maybe it was 25, but it was somewhere in there. And then the 30 minute um, whole group lesson one day. And um, 
we did so we did a center's approach for that. So I'm going to show you kind of how that looked a little bit more. So for the whole group, we uh, Melissa and I created some PowerPoints. Um, really, really, really simple. We just put the core board up. We had the kids identify um, the kids who were able to walk up and touch it, or we would hold the, the boards in front of them and we would just touch where that picture was. And on the board, Melissa had the idea of putting a little star on it. So we did that, you know, something really simple. And it was just practicing where, you know, finding the word and using the word. Then we we did the chatter book, which is errorless learning. So if this is was already created, but you could create this on your own. Um, basically, it has phrases that are like, when I want more juice, I say, and then kids would practice saying more. And so they really couldn't get it wrong. And there's either a Velcro version or there's a drag version online, you know, click and drag. <laughs> Um, and I thought it was going to be kind of boring, but the kids really loved it. And that practice, that repetition was just so important. Um, and then we always incorporated a literacy part. So um, the program recommended books, but we also found books that we liked that had these core words. Um, more is a really good one because a lot of books more, more, more repeated, like Bear Wants More, um, More Spaghetti, Please. This one was More Apples on Top. Um, and then we would just tape the word more in the book and then we would practice and I'm going to show you a video of kind of how that looks in action. Um, but the kids also really loved that. And it was just a really nice way for us to incorporate some of that read aloud literacy activities into the lessons that we were doing. And the big part was just constant modeling. Um, and we were really lucky. We had a couple ESPs who were in there supporting behaviors. And so they were also helping us model the use of the core boards. Um, and then the center's approach, um, basically I didn't do a ton of planning either. I was doing a lot of just, we, we can use these words doing anything. So what are we gonna do? One day I did do a writing activity just to help incorporate that in. You can see here, this is a tracing writing activity, but the you could also just have them write the word depending on whatever level they're on, trace the word. This was just circling or putting a box around it. Um, and then what I would read another book or, you can see I have wind up toys. I would just pull in a toy um, at the center I was sitting at and we would work, we would target more, but we would work on tons of these just functional words um, that are on the core boards and, you know, more, want, again, <laughs> done, all of those. Um, I also just put an iPad app. It's like a feeding game that the kids love. Um, that's the Toka Boca, if anyone's heard of that. <laughs> those are really popular, um, but that's really repetitive. Um, so that's just kind of how I structured it. Some days I didn't know what I was going to do until five minutes before, but what I'm learning about AAC and core is that it doesn't really matter the activity as long as the kids are engaged and motivated by it. Um, so it was nice. Melissa had a ton of wind up toys. We did that a lot. Kids really loved that one. Um, any questions about how we kind of structured that part of it? I do just want to add, Ren, that yeah. when we did the centers, we didn't always, in our whole group, we didn't always just do it with students that were nonverbal that depended yeah. on the core board. We had some students that were higher functioning, so they participated and modeled and just had, they, they were just as active and engaged as the, the students who required it. So I, I love that you added that because as a speech therapist and any other speech therapist knows, it's hard to, um, schedule and get minutes in, but I was able to work on a lot of the students' goals just in that center's approach um, because we had most of the students in the room. And it was really neat because the other centers, um, the teacher would have kids doing um, some of their OT work or maybe some of their academic work. It depended on the day. So um, I was getting about seven minutes with each kid and I would just be targeting. I had two or three three usually at the table, but I would just be able to target whatever their goals were. Um, either it was using the core board, the functional vocabulary, or maybe it was sentence expansions. Maybe it was we're working on prepositions, um, but it, I could use it in whatever activity we had at the table, which was really nice um, as far as a model for intervention. And then, this was a little video, so I probably won't play the whole thing. I'll just play a minute or so of it. Um, but 
Um, she's doing a literacy activity really similar to what we did. And you will see as she, she's using um, the SNAP core board that you can, I think you can download that one right from Toby Dinovox. Um, it's a little bit bigger than the one that we used, but uh, it has very similar vocabulary on it. And you will see um, as she's going, she's going to point to the words as they come up in the story. So, but I'm gonna mute myself so we don't get echoes here or mute my computer, I mean. Hi, welcome to today's video. video. In, in today's, today's video, video, we are going to be reading the book not a box by Antoinette Portis. I'm going to be providing aided language input on a Snapcore first word wall poster from Toby Dynavac. Oh no, is it paused? <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, it looks like it's buffering or something, but okay. you can give it a second and see if it loads. Okay, it does look like it's loaded up to here, but. Hmm, shoot. <laughs> I could maybe pull it up in YouTube. Yeah, give it a try. I'll have to stop sharing and reshare. So yeah, here. perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Of course, it worked when we tried it, but sometimes with videos with the bandwidth that just happens. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Welcome to today's video. I'll reshare my screen here. See if we can get it to work. Thanks for your patience, guys. I feel like we're always gracious about technology <laughs> things with this group. It's kind of a given. So that looks great. Well, thank you. <laughs> Can you see it now? Okay. Video. In today's video, we are going to be reading the book, Not a Box by Antoinette Portis. I'm going to be providing aided language input on a Shucks, I don't know. <laughs> Could just be my computer. Well, and I think sometimes when we're sharing our screens and all of that bandwidth yeah. kind of gets, gets yeah. pulled. But um, everyone just know that that video is linked in the <laughs> slides and I'll make sure, I'll share out the slides. I'll put the link in the chat yeah. window right now again. It's attached to the to the to um, to that piece. But um, if you wanna give it one more try, I'd be down for it. Okay. Um, I'll, I can also just explain. Um, so, so the modeling technique basically is we're looking for as much repetition as possible. So she said she was targeting the not word. And I think maybe the, did she say what? I can't remember. But um, every time the word not comes up, she points to the not and she kind of slows down her sentence and her modeling. Um, and she also points to other words as well. But you can tell she's really focusing on the repetition um not um so when we were doing like more we would make sure that every time we got to a more we would point to the more on the board um and what's interesting about the watching the video is you can start to kind of think about okay well how would i use this just during other activities and i think that um the best way to model and what i've seen in other examples is just in your own speech if you say i'll actually go to the next slide because i think i talk about this um, but if you say, um, I want more cheese, then you would go, I want more cheese, um, if that's what you were um, targeting. So let's see, tab, I'm going to share this again with you guys. Okay. Hopefully we can see it again here. Okay, so this is kind of my example for modeling. So um, it's the probably the most important part, which is why I said, you know, we had a lot of other staff, we wanted to see us using this. Um, so you need to, you don't need to model every single word you're saying. 
but you do want to make sure you're modeling, pointing to the word as they come up. And I think another big part of this is, is that we've used the boards receptively as well. So when we're giving a direction, um, we've also used the board for like stop or um, we're done so that students not only see us practicing using it, but it helps them understand what the direction is. So here's the example um, that I read also, that's a nice one. So if you're leaving the classroom to go to the cafeteria, you would say it's time to go to the cafeteria and touch the word go um, when you get to that word in your sentence. So it's time to go to the cafeteria. Um, a couple other things to consider. I talked a little bit about that fringe vocabulary. Um, and it, I think it's just really important that we still use that fringe vocabulary in those different settings. Um, some people, I'll show you a picture in a little bit. Some people have boards created for all the different activities they use. Um, this is not saying, I think I read throw the baby out with the bathwater type situation. Just because we're incorporating the core boards, we're not gonna get rid of those other supports that the students have for communication. So if you have a board that you use when you play bubbles, Keep bringing the bubble board out, but you're also going to have maybe the core board with you kind of thing. Um, and then the other big thing to really remember when you're doing this to help with the generalization is your, you know, the model we used was great for teaching and instructing and modeling, but you really, really want to make sure you're using these supports um, throughout the entire day and that the students have those boards available to them across their day. One of the things that worked well for us, for the kids that were using it to communicate, that we saw a lot of them just pick it up right away, is we actually, they all had picture schedules. We just taped the board to the back of their picture schedule. So they had both of those visuals everywhere they went throughout the day. Um, I also read some people felt more comfortable integrating the, the core board in more natural activities. So I think that's something to consider. We really liked the structure because it helped us get our service minutes. It helped us model all of those things. But some people just, they feel more comfortable pulling a core board out, working on things during snack time or, you know, at some of those play activities or maybe during routines, other routines during the day. So you wouldn't have to follow a same, the same model we did, but it that's just what worked for us. And then I pulled a few pictures off the Assistware website just showing um, them using the board in all these different types of settings. I've seen them create big ones for playgrounds. Um, that's a goal of mine that I'm trying to get a grant <laughs> in the district for. And then you can see like some FIED pictures um, just so, you know showing that it's important to use it kind of everywhere everywhere the kids and the teachers go. Um, I also added a little note here. We use board maker pictures for our boards. You can use any system. The important thing is to keep the same symbol for the word every time you put it somewhere so that the students know. Because one big factor about core vocabulary and why it can be really challenging to teach and learn is that it's abstract. There isn't one picture that represents everything. Some people use the word sign more for the picture, but if you think about that, it's still an abstract idea. It's not like putting a picture of a ball means a ball <laughs> kind of thing. So just making sure that's consistent on all of your communication um, pictures like schedules and boards, and even if you're doing some fringe boards. Um, we only have a couple minutes. I was just gonna say one of the things that I'm noticing with the new AAC systems that I'm working with is they almost all have a section of core vocabulary. So the top left one, this is the chat words from the pod system. The, the middle one is the pro loco to go. And then that top right is that Toby Dynavox um, snap core board. Um, so if you guys have ever used any of this assist these systems, you'll see that one of the big things is that you can access that core really quickly. So in the pod system, that chat word box comes up on almost every page. So even if they're playing ball, they can quickly click on the chat words and get to more or done or wait or hurry up. I hear that one a lot. <laughs> um, and really quickly, I just have a picture of a fringe board here, just so you guys get a visual of that. Um, this is the Play-Doh board on the right, and then they have a core board on the left. So the right is the vocabulary specific to Play-Doh, and the left is those core words, which we can use anywhere, anytime. So. 
quickly outcomes. These are the things that we just saw in our program. We had embedded training opportunities for staff, which we loved because we had a hard time finding those. Increased interest in communication. Um, we saw kids starting to grab boards or point to the big, big board on the wall, even without prompting. It improved those receptive skills. There was a decrease in behavior or when a behavior was happening, a lot of kids would respond to being presented with the core board because they felt comfortable using it. Um, increased structure for our teaching model, which was helpful for us, saved some time, and then just more learning opportunities and some parent involvement. We started sending the core board home and a lot of parents really in, in, enjoyed having that. They would stick it on the refrigerator or something and use it as a tool. So, okay, I got through everything, but barely. <laughs> I really want to answer questions if people have them or suggestions too of other ways to incorporate core vocabulary. Um, I'm open, so. Yeah, so feel free to unmute yourselves and talk or put something in the chat window if you want to, whatever, however you're comfortable asking some questions. I just want to share really quick, you know, like Ren said, we wanted something quick. If this is something that interests you, you can just literally go on the internet and type in core board and you can yeah. print it in color today and use it in five minutes. So it's not something that, you know, in the future you might you'd be able to change it or you might want to change it. But if you wanted to access something simple, um, you could go online and just you could find it simply that way and just print it. Exactly. I think that's uh -oh. a good point to make because I find myself, I don't know what I want to put on it. Which one's for this kid? Which one's for this? Sometimes it's better to just, just go with something that's there and see what happens, you know? Exactly. Ren, I have a quick question. If um, Sure. I, yeah. I'm always leery to take up the time if anyone else has questions, interrupt me. Um, but my question is about the training, the embedded training opportunities you talked about with your ESPs and teachers. What did that look like for your team? It, it honestly, honestly, and Melissa, you can interrupt too. It honestly looked like we're with the kids, I'm using the board. And at the same time, I'm sort of explaining to the staff why I'm doing it and what works and then giving them an opportunity to try it with me. So hopefully they felt more comfortable. Um, and we did see them using it then independently at other times. So that, it was really simple. I didn't have to plan. I just basically was showing them what I was doing and, and, and gave them an opportunity to try. On that note, I think it's also important to note too that we weren't always perfect. So then we would oh, yeah. go to use a word and then we would be like doing the circle method to try and find it. So we weren't ever modeling that we were doing that we were it was easy. You know, we were constantly modeling that, you know, when you want to say hi or bye or more, there would be times where you would be like, where is it again? And then so um, we didn't model perfection yes. all the time. Yes. Um, and I think explaining why we're doing things and the benefits that we see um, in an open conversation, I think it just motivated them and they got to see it firsthand. It wasn't like I was in the speech room doing my thing and then being like, okay, guys, do this. <laughs> um, we were kind of all in the trenches together, you know? And the other thing that Ren would do is then if people were using it, then she could correct them or model it or say good job or reinforce it. So then they were, they were constantly given feedback from her, you know, just because she was in there. Did you have kids using this with um, devices too? Like, how did how did that look for you? Like, if they had a device, did you try to match, you know, the core board that you were using with what was on their device? Or, yeah. So at the same time that we were doing this program, we had one student using Snap and one student using a pod book, like a physical book. So um, we just modeled on their devices as well. Um, and most of those do have the same core vocabulary. Some even have the same pictures. I think the snap pictures, like any of the Toby stuff is the same images that we used on our board. Um, but yes, we would just model on whatever device was there, we would model that core vocabulary. And like I said, most newer versions of AAC do have a core um, version. Like I said, pod calls it chat words, but it's really the same, same concept. Um, so we would just model with whatever system they had. Cool. Did you find it important to make sure that things were located in the same spots as far as the board looked or? 
Um, we never changed the board. And if we modified the board for a more simple, like we had one student where we took some of the options off of the board. We only had maybe six options for her. We had them in the same spot. Um, so it looked blank in places. And the, like maybe the more was at the top and the high was way down here, but they were the same spots so that they could learn that motor memory once we started adding more options onto the board. Is that what you were asking kind of? Yeah, or? just kind of like, I'm, I'm thinking of the kids that I have that are using devices and it's like, right. yeah, it looks slightly different on every device. You know, mm -hmm. things are set in different places and you know. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can't, I think there's a barrier there that isn't something you can change because you want their devices to stay the same, right? You right. Yeah. You don't want to be editing them. Um, so I think the important thing is that you're modeling on their device mm -hmm. what your expectation is. They still might see you modeling for other kids on the core board. Um, but but when you want to show them what they should be doing, yeah. I mean, I think you're, you're already doing that, but modeling on their devices is, is probably more important. And that's something that took me some time to get used to because I think there was a time when we used to say like, that's Johnny's device, like no one else touches it. But what I'm learning now is that when kids see us modeling those things, they're more willing to use them. And so I've even encouraged all the staff to use the devices, even, you know, depending on the student population, you might have other kids also interacting with the device too. Mm -hmm. um, obviously safety and we don't want to break anything, but <laughs> within reason I have done that too. Yeah. Did that answer that or help? Yeah, that ends. Yep. Thank okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, one other thing I did want to say is I actually started this year putting a core board in all of our kindergarten rooms, which has been really nice for some of those kids, even who just have some anxiety about communicating. <laughs> I have one little kiddo who he can be a selective mute at times, but when I put the board in the classroom, all the kindergartners wanted to use it. And then he was really encouraged to use it for things like asking to go to the bathroom or um, saying how he felt, um, cause he had a lot of emotions too. So I saw some really nice success this year, even incorporating it in those gen ed areas. So I forgot to add that earlier. Amazing, Ren. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing this information. Mm -hmm. It's clearly, like I said, one of the biggest registrations we've had. And so clearly people are interested in this content. And just so all of you know, we were having a conversation before we started the session that we definitely want to have Ren back to talk about some other topics too, about how she's integrating some of the specific communication devices and systems. So just know that that'll be coming up. Um, I'm going to stop recording now, but know that I can definitely hang around and answer 